Today for Talks at Google, I would like to welcome Chuck Bryant and Josh Clark joining us from Atlanta. Um, as you probably know, Chuck, Josh and Chuck are the hosts of the award-winning podcast, Stuff You Should Know, which has been broadcast twice weekly since 2008, totaling more than 800 episodes on topics including, but not limited to, Ouija boards, asteroid mining, termites, the use of MDMA to treat mental illness, gender reassignment surgery, disco, icebergs, and more. I was going to add poop. To, yeah, to you that can't link. forget poop. <laughs> you can't forget poop. That was a blockbuster. Um, <laughs> uh, Stuff You Should Know is one of the most popular podcasts ever and has grown beyond the podcast to include a video series. Um, my name is Carrie Batten, and without fur further ado, let's give Chuck and Josh a warm welcome. Thank you for having us, everybody. It's quite an honor to be here. Thanks for taking time out of your day. Although, uh, I'm really surprised you guys brought your laptops. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> totally expected that. And I'm Josh, and that's Chuck, by the way. Yeah, but Chuck is OK. We get Chuck, that a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Josh. Yeah. Josh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so today is October 18th, and it's going to be something like 80 degrees outside. And I would just be curious, say you wanted to take that fact and turn it into an episode. Where would you start? Ooh, okay, that's a good question. <laughs> um, well, I guess uh, climate change probably would be a good one. Yeah, maybe the difference between uh, weather and climate. That'd be a pretty good one, I think. The uh, urban heat island effect. Yeah, what else? Um, <laughs> uh, so, well, we did we do sweating officially? Or did we just talk about it all the time because of me? We, uh, no, we've done uh, <laughs> how can somebody sweat colors? Oh, right. Wait, yes. how can someone sweat colors? Oh, man. I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> right when I said that, I was like, don't say it, Josh. He's going to have a follow-up question. <laughs> um, We've done almost 900 episodes, so something kind of goes in, one thing goes out. Yeah, actually, right. it's like a club. We're yeah. walking evidence that the, there's a finite amount of space in the human brain for memory because old stuff is moving out as new stuff is moving in. Yeah, we'll just say if you're sweating colors, go to a doctor. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's good. Advice. And let them explain it to you. Right. Um, you can't like uh, I think there's cases of it where people were eating um, a lot of curry and sweat colors. I think some people have um, their digestive tract. <laughs> Actually, at this point, I'm just <laughs> making stuff up. <laughs> no, I want to be. I want to be right so bad. There was I that senator know. who was silver. Remember that guy or blue? Yeah, blue from eating copper. Or yeah. silver, colloidal silver. I bet he's he was a colors. senator. I think a senator, congressman. Anyone know? Remember that guy? See, this is total stuff you should know. We got one part <laughs> right, and then we add some other weird aspect to it. It's totally yeah. wrong. Like, there's no way that guy's a senator. It's a condition. Yeah. Well, he's a colonel. That's what it was. Right. I was going to ask how you guys go about finding your topics, but I think I just witnessed it in action. <laughs> um, it's about right. Yeah. I start sweating, and then we just start talking, and yeah. the words come out. <laughs> Uh, but once you've nailed down the subject for, you know, this upcoming Tuesday, how do you go about researching that topic? Well, uh, typically we start with an article from the parent website that we are under, uh, HowStuffWorks.com. And uh, that's a good framework usually, and we don't script anything out or outline anything or go over it together, really. We just sort of start there, do our own research, and try and surprise and delight each other with what we find. And then we just have a conversation about it yeah. together. Oh, you do independent research and then you come together. Right. Oh. And there's no, you handle this part, I'll handle this part. We just sit down and start having a conversation. And Jerry records it. And every once in a while, we'll misspeak or something like that. And we go back and correct ourselves. And to do that, we'll say, beep. So that Jerry, when she's editing it, will hear that beep and cut it out. Right. Hey, Jerry over there, by the way. So it's um, appropriately yeah, Jerry's off camera. camera. Why don't you give a round of applause for Jerry? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Famous Jerry. Some people think she doesn't exist, but she does. She does. <laughs> yeah, she's here with us. Yeah. Um, and so, what are what are your are all sources um, open for for business when you're going to research a topic, or do you do you, how how rigorous are you with choosing the the sources of your information? Um, we've learned to be pretty rigorous. We can tell the difference. I mean, if if there's one thing we do, it's research. We do that well. 
So we've just learned over time like what's a legitimate source and what isn't. And some some that seem like maybe they wouldn't be the most legitimate are actually well researched. Like um, there's a, a site I like to go check out called um, Damn Interesting, um, and they're it's just this repository of really interesting articles, long form articles. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Damn Interesting, but you should go check it out. Um, and they uh, they they are really, really well researched. So you can go to Damn Interesting and, and you know get some information and use that. What we've figured out is the best thing to do, though, is to go back and find somebody else to back it up as well. Um, and we've also learned red flags over the years. Like um, if you run across a, an amazing fact and um, you go to find supporting evidence for it elsewhere and you find the same amazing fact in almost exactly the same wording, um, it's got kind of this copy-paste quality to it, and <laughs> yeah. it just kind of becomes dubious. So we, we shy away from that as well. What's an example of kind of a legendary famous fact that is embedded in everyone's brains that is deeply false? Oh, boy. That's a good one. Because you're kind of asking about urban legends in a right. way. Right. Which we did a show on. Yeah. We did do one on urban <laughs> legends. About six or eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I can't really think of one right now. I mean, we have we we try to remember the true facts more. Right. Um, <laughs> we try, but um, yeah, the research it always starts with Google for me. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Which is true. Uh, and where else do you it's start? You know. Bing for you. No, no, it's it's Google for me yeah, as well. Okay. It's Google, everybody. <laughs> we try to move past page one. Just to be thorough. Right. Sure, yeah. Actually, that's a good point, Chuck, because the deeper you go, the the more you're going to avoid that copy-paste stuff, right? So when you're like in page five or something of Google, it just starts to like, the good stuff really starts we to We see all up. those Easter eggs, by the way. Well yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> Makes our job a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, has there ever been a topic that y you set out to research and you just couldn't really crack it enough to make an episode about it? We usually press on and do the episode anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly. Uh, and one of the things about our show that I think has helped its popularity over the years is we don't claim to be experts or anything. And we all we our aim is is to just provide a good overview of something in about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and a lot of the topics we do, people have full podcasts on that subject matter. So, you know, for years that we'll talk about the same thing mm -hmm. that we try and give an overview on in 45 minutes. So uh, we've gotten in over our heads before. Uh, the Sun podcast, very famously, yeah. um, among our listeners, has been one that we always kind of still harp on as being uh, not great because it was just so dense and hard and difficult to wrap our heads around. Just from a scientific perspective, it's, yeah. the, right. it's just a lot more confusing than you would imagine. Yeah, we There's got a good a Sun fact, though. Oh, oh yeah, I do, I do. Right. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> this is a knock your socks off fact. So it takes <laughs> on the order of uh, about 100,000 years for a photon to make its way from the center of the sun to the surface, and then eight minutes to make it from the surface to the Earth. Not bad. So that sunlight you see is 100,008 <laughs> minutes old right. by the time that you see it outside. And, and I have to say, there is one episode that we were like, we can't release this. And it's sitting under glass right now. Oh, that's right. Just in case something happens to me or Chuck and we, we, we need an emergency backup episode, we actually have one. It's called um, How Pet Detectives Work. <laughs> and it's about people who find lost pets. And uh, we got to the end of this. And we look over. <laughs> Jerry's just sitting there like this. <laughs> we couldn't make eye contact with each other. It was really kind of embarrassing. We were like, I don't, I don't think we can release this. So we we're like, let's just hang on to this. This will be our, our emergency episode. Yeah, and we actually recently re-recorded an episode entirely that we didn't remember we had recorded before. Oh, yeah. And it's sort of been an inside joke, like, it's going to happen one day. And uh, we got all the way through it. We released it. And the comments started rolling in. Right. And, I kept uh, <laughs> waiting for you to reference the first version of this, and you guys never did. Yeah, well, it was uh, <laughs> customs, about how customs works. And I didn't remember it at all. No, me either. Like, there was no bell ringing. Nothing. Like, eh, this seems a little familiar. Just deadness. Yeah. 
We're just sitting there recording it a second time. Yeah. Uh, so we debated taking it down, but then we thought, you know what? We'll leave it, and it'll be a nice little trivia for the uh, for the listener base. Like, what's the one time? Hopefully just one time. <laughs> what, uh, which one was better? I don't know. I think the second one probably was. I would, I would hope so. Yeah. yeah. I would think so. so yeah, I'm if we were better the first time, then we're doing something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we're declining. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious to to uh, to hear how you guys do. You imagine yourselves as educators or entertainers? Edutainers. Edutainers. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I, just I imagine that. myself as a cowboy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, An astronaut. Oh, sorry. I think yeah, Ed- definitely. Pet detective. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. Never. Uh, yeah, edutainment sort of a sure. stupid word that we've it been is. throwing around a lot but over it's, the years. It's accurate though. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of. Uh, people who have graduated school and gone out into the world and, and are living life and don't have access to, um, you know, a, a constant source of new stuff, like lear- new stuff to learn. Um, and we definitely give that to people. But I think one of the reasons the podcast has been successful is because it is presented in an entertaining, approachable way. You know, there's not any judgment because we don't know it any more than anyone else does. We just went out and researched something and now we're talking about it. And I think that's also kept a big target off of our backs over the years too, is we've never been experts or purported to be experts. We're just a couple of guys who research stuff and then talk about it. Mm -hmm. Right, you're not getting, although I do imagine Mm -hmm. you get a lot of fan feedback of finger wagging and saying, you got this right or you got this wrong. a lot, Yeah. a lot. What percentage of your fan interaction would you say that that kind of fact checking constitutes? Hmm. It's hard to say because so many emails start with like, "I love you guys. You're so yeah. great. This is a great podcast." However, right? <laughs> but there's this one thing I have to point out. Yeah, people um, are usually really nice about it. Um, we found that some of the the meaner ones are when we do something on something that's really someone's passion, um, like. You would not believe how angry chess enthusiasts are. We did an episode on chess, and they were not nice people. So when you go by Washington Square Park and you see them, they look delightful out there playing on those tables with their little time clocks. Don't fall for it. They're animals. (laughs) They'll they'll cut you. (laughs) And soccer, whoo. We got killed on the soccer episode. And, you know, they're nitpicky things a lot of times for, for... the, the passionate ones about, you know, their their life's passion. Right. So I get it. But it's it's a good point, though, too. Like, it's not like we can go out and become, like, devoted soccer fanatics and understand every single nuance before we go and record. So, of course, we're going to get it wrong. But on the other <laughs> side, the flip side of that, like with the Sun episode, like we heard from straight-up astrophysicists whose specialty is the Sun, and they corrected us. And when we hear from people like that, um, we it's usually couched in, a, uh, you guys did a pretty good job, but... You got this way, way wrong, and you know I just wanted to let you guys know in case we'll you read those on the yourself. air. That's been a big correction; has been a big part of the show, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But just to hear from people who, like, actually know what we were talking about um, is is pretty neat. It's pretty gratifying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so if you if you scroll through the list of the most recent episodes, one thing that's very refreshing is you're one of the few podcast that has not um, turned your attention to Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you Wait, who? T- right. <laughs> he's, this, he's this guy. Um, but uh, it, you guys really don't, y- you don't stick to the news cycle, um, and you really s- tend to stay away from any kind of sensationalist story or clickbaity thing. Is, has that been a, an ongoing goal in, in the, the podcast? Uh, I think so. I mean, we've tried to remain fairly academic, and um, there's enough of that out there. Right. Like, there's plenty of that if you want to seek that out. So um, we like to think we're a nice little... Oasis. Yeah, a little corner of the Internet where you can go learn about hibernation and not uh, talking about politics. And we've gotten political here and there, but we try to keep it neutral, Um you know, our listeners kind of know where we lie on the spectrum politically because we are humans, um, and it's hard to not reveal that at all. But, um, you know, we will say things like, you should take care of homeless people, and then we'll get <laughs> feedback 
from angry people who say, no, you should not take care of homeless people. Yeah, that was a surprise. They deserve to be where they are, and that was a very disheartening episode, actually, yeah. for that reason. But if we do get political, it's usually more like about the political process, like how the electoral college works or how presidential debates work or stuff like that. And then just in talking about the process, you also talk about the contemporary take of it. You know, So we do kind of wade into it here or there, but we're not trying to necessarily shove our viewpoints down someone's throat. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while it just can't be helped. Or we're like, this is important enough to one or both of us that we will just say, yeah, this is my opinion and I'm pretty serious about it. Like the bullfighting episode. Yeah. So Chuck was foaming at the mouth. <laughs> Hated bullfighting. And um, I mean, a few people wrote in and said, you, you need to keep your opinions to yourself. But for the most part, I think most people saw it the same way you do. Yeah. Um, and every once in a while, it's just like, no, we, we feel like we should share our opinions on this. Mm -hmm. um, so it does come out, but we try to remain neutral for sure. And bullfighting, it's, you believe it's, bad. it's cruel and bad that the bulls get killed. I didn't realize they got killed at the end. It's yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, that's a big part of bullfighting. Yeah, fighting. that's what Chuck <laughs> hates about it. Yeah. 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 Well, that and the fighting part, too, I guess. Yeah. The Every whole, once in a while, thing. the bull will get theirs, though. Those were fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. I saw something recently. There's a type of bullfighting that involves no swords and no death. As far as I know, there's no death. Um, it's basically avoiding the bull. It's pretty awesome. I think it's called like bull jumping or something like that. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> not kidding. A bull social? M bull jumping. Bull jumping? Yeah. I, I could get behind that, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I saw it, and I was like, Chuck's going to yeah. love this. Do they just make fun of him and tease them? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Bull's like, knock it off. I imagine when you guys go to parties or social events, are pe people just constantly saying, well, tell me this fact, or tell me a crazy fact, or using you guys as kind of a repository of, mm -hmm. of trivia. I've learned not to go to parties. Yeah. <laughs> Not in my personal life. Nobody, none of my friends want to hear that stuff. That's true. That's very refreshing. And it's the same way for both of us. Yeah. Our families are like, shh. Right. This, is your, it, this is your quiet safe Fan space. events, for sure. People, yeah. yeah, come up and want to know very specific things about specific episodes. And you say, let me, you can Google it. Or right. <laughs> I, I do, quite often, actually. <laughs> um, I want to go back to the beginning a little bit when you started uh, in 2008, it was, correct? Mm -hmm. um, and that was a time when not a lot of people were podcasting the way that they are now. Mm -hmm. So what made you guys say, this might be good as a podcast? Well, originally, um, Chuck said that we start our research out by selecting a, an article off of How Stuff Works. And that was the original idea for the podcast. It was a way to get this great amount of wonderful information that's on how stuff works all these great nonfiction articles out to people who don't sit around and read articles on the web all day they'd rather listen to stuff when they commute or work out or whatever um, so the guy who was running the show at the time said you guys let's go let's go take these articles and make them into a podcast and uh, I was like I don't know what a podcast is but let's try it so um, he put us with Jerry um, and we, uh, we tried it a, co with a couple of different iterations before Chuck, and then they brought Chuck in, and it was like, okay, we got it figured out. Mm -hmm. So um, I think right after Chuck came in, um, it really started to take off, actually. Like, the addition of Chuck caused the podcast to skyrocket. Come on. It's true, though. <laughs> it is true. But the whole thing started out as a way to repurpose these articles on the website into something else. And how do you guys um, develop reputations at the company or just in life as especially curious, curious, roving uh, types of people? You know, that's kind of the company right. uh, line, you know, how stuff works. Every, everyone, even before we did podcasts and we were all just writing articles, um, everyone, and that still works there, really just has that curiosity at their core. Uh, that's sort of the brand, uh, company brand, is just to be inquisitive about stuff and to not kind of uh, sleep through life. And um, I imagine you guys are kind of all the same way, you know, just sort of pay attention to the world around you, be interested in what's going on. Mm -hmm. So it was really kind of born out of that uh, company ethos. And one thing we've learned over the years, too, is um, if we're researching something and we come across a question, we've got to go find the answer to that question. Because if we have that question, somebody else listening to the podcast is probably going to have the same question. We don't want them leaving the podcast going, like, well, wait a minute, what about this? You know, 
Um, so when we're doing that, it very frequently leads to more questions. But it's kind of fun, you know, to just chase question after question after question until you feel like you have a really good handle on a topic, you know. And then those make for the best episodes, I think, where we both sit down and we both know what we're talking about, like, just fully. Because you can just kind of let go and um, just have a lot more fun when you feel like you know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I imagine there are tons of topics that on the surface appear to be very dull or dry, and then you actually start researching them, and they become really exciting. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. yeah. Like, we did one on grass. Yeah. <laughs> grass. I think the name of the episode was an episode on grass? Yes. Not marijuana grass. No, we've done marijuana. We just called that marijuana. Yeah, just like lawns. This is, yeah, grass. It was good. So, yes, we have found some topics that seem dull on the surface. Now, does the inverse also work, that, that some topics that seem really sparkly and exciting on the surface turn out to be not that deep or complicated? Hmm. I'm sure that happens. I've got one. You got one? <laughs> there, we did this episode. It's one of my favorites on um, disembodied feet washing up I, I around BC. Oh, yeah, that. yeah. You guys ever heard of that? Okay. Um, Chuck was was reading the material and he was like, "Man, I was so psyched about this. I thought this is so awesome." And then I figured out what it was. It turns out people are like falling over over boats or off of bridges or something like that. Their bodies get trapped and their feet just kind of get loose and then all of a sudden they float <laughs> to the top and they wash up on shore. He was like, "I thought it was like something way cooler than that." I was like, "What? Yeah. That's pretty cool." He's like, yeah, their, I, their feet get loose. Yeah, I think I think you didn't want the you didn't want the mystery to be solved is what it was. Yeah, right? that was pretty much it. I thought there was some like X Files like reason <laughs> behind it all, not just loose feet. Loose feet. That is a great episode. I strongly recommend that one. <laughs> it is very. No, I, I I remember listening to that episode and I kind of blinked and felt like I missed the answer. I was like, wait, what, you didn't what, miss what, it. What, right? What was, what, there was no real explanation. It was just kind of the well, it's the, the, the way the body. Back. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's a top-notch explanation. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's neat. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about your fans and your audience. And uh, you've taken the show on the road quite a bit. And it seems like you've been doing a lot of overseas shows in countries that are not the most advanced when it comes to podcasts. And they Ooh, which one? Well, I don't know. Maybe like the, in the UK, the, the, the podcasts are not quite that popular yet, so I'm surprised that you guys would have such a such an audience there. Yeah, uh, we were kind of surprised too. Um, we have a lot of support in the UK, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK, and Canada are sort of the big uh, countries that that follow us. Um, yeah, we we sold out two shows in London. It was pretty neat, and we went to Dublin and uh, Edinburgh and uh, Manchester. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, they're different over there. The audiences are much different. We yeah. weren't quite prepared for that. How so? They're just a little more um, staid. Reserved. Yeah, not quite as expressive. Especially in Manchester, which was our first show. Yeah, they and were we, having a great time, they said, but it was right, just but like, yeah. this is wonderful. <laughs> that was it. And then they gave us a standing ovation at the end, and we yeah. were like... What is wrong with you guys? Stop <laughs> toying with us. They're, they're kind of the people, instead of laughing at something, they say, oh, that's very funny. Right. <laughs> We're sort of used to yeah. American audiences. You can pander to, and they love it. Although, Dublin was definitely up our, our alley, too. Yeah, well, we, everyone was drinking a yeah. lot in it was, Dublin. It was fun. <laughs> Which it, was, it was a fun show. Mm -hmm. All, the whole tour was amazing, though. Like The fact that we were... I think it kind of hit us every night, too. The fact that we were overseas... And people were paying to see us podcast live. It was like, oh my God, this is actually happening, you know? Right. Well, how, how do you think those people were exposed to the podcast? Uh, I mean, I've always found the UK is pretty ahead of the curve technology wise. I mean, I remember the first cell phone I ever saw in my life was in London. Um, so maybe I'm under the wrong impression, but I kind of thought they were sort of on the leading edge of stuff like that. Um, am I wrong? They Everybody? do have really fast Wi-Fi in London, I will say. All right, well, maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I, I mean, I was under the same impression, actually, to tell you the truth. If, if that's not the case, then there are a select group of people who are super hip and in the know, right. and those are the <laughs> right. people who are at our shows. Right. Can you kind of sum up how, how podcasting has changed in the eight years since you started as kind of a fledgling little organization? 
Well, it's obviously grown a lot, um, not only in sheer number of uh, podcasts out there, um, which is great. You know, you can find anything. You can find a lot of anything that you're interested in and choose from that subsect, uh, subsection. Subsection? Subsect? It works. Um, I make up words a lot, by the way. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, as far as being a viable business, it's um, companies are putting advertising dollars into it, which is a big deal. That mm -hmm. I think that sort of has helped legitimize it in um, a lot of people's eyes. And because of that, then, then you have um, people like Katie Couric starting her own podcast and, you know, some kind of people in other traditional media who were very, very big are now kind of trying to dip their toe in the water. But, you know, that's that's been the case, though, for a lot of people like um, Kevin Pollack is a longtime podcaster. Everybody knows him from The Usual Suspects. Right. Um, <laughs> And I'm sure there's other examples, but Kevin Pollock's a great one. <laughs> but there are plenty of people who have been into podcasting, who have kind of kept it going. Um, and then, yeah, now that it's a lot bigger, people like Katie Kirk are getting into it. I think Shaq has one that's coming out or that is out. Um, but one thing that seems to be surviving this transition into more of a, a mainstream form of uh, media uh, seems to be this DIY thing that podcasting has always had going on, right? That from the get-go, um, there's always been very low barriers to entry into podcasts. And there have been a lot of people who have just decided to make a podcast, sometimes in their basement or in their garage or wherever. Um, and that's still going on. Like, it's not being crowded out, which is really great, because that would really stink for people to be you know, to make this a passion project for years and years and years and then just get forced out as Shaq and Katie Couric come into the <laughs> fold, you know? That just doesn't seem I just fair. picture her riding on his shoulders. Right. <laughs> that would be a heck of a podcast. Yeah. That'd be like the Snoop Dogg Martha Stewart show that I am <laughs> psyched about seeing. I haven't heard of that. Are you having a show together? No. Yes. They're doing a show on, I think, Lifetime. It's like a, a, a dinner party show. Snoop and, and Martha, Martha Stewart. I'm not joking. Wow. <laughs> is it called the Dizzle Party? Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. what it's called. Oh, they missed an opportunity. But it's not. it's coming out it's this November, I think. I, that was a little bit of buzz marketing, but it came from here. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. <laughs> right. Totally. Um, how do you feel about? So you guys have worked in the video format, and how do you feel about switching this trend? Or a lot of podcasters are turning their podcasts into television shows, and and we had the, a television well, you had show it right on si the Science mm -hmm. Channel. And what are the challenges of turning a sort of fast and loose audio format into a TV show? The challenges Many. are great. Yes, yeah. myriad, as evidenced by the fact that our show was one season long. Hey, that was not <laughs> our fault, man. <laughs> That was a great show. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, there's a lot of ways to skin that cat um, from just setting up cameras in your studio, kind of Howard Stern style, um, to doing what we did, which was uh, making a sitcom out of our show. A scripted comedy. Which was a little weird for the Science Channel, uh, we now understand. But... Um, <laughs> Mark Maron was doing it, so we thought, hey, we'll give it a shot. Sure, yeah. Actually, we, we had I our show out in front of his. Yeah. yeah. We, we broke the ground. That's right. <laughs> um, th I mean, everything we do is unscripted. I don't know if that comes across or not, <laughs> but um, w to, to be faced with a script that, like, we even wrote some of them, co-wrote some of them, um, and even after writing them, to be faced with a script and then like, this doesn't work. So now you get another script that's like Marigold and then that didn't work. So here's the Magenta script. And like every every major revision, they, they give you a brand new script. And it's like, no, wait, I just learned the last one. Um, it's really challenging. And then uh, we had this great director. His name's Chad. Chad would say, um, don't act. We'd be like, well, that's good because we're not actors. And um, you, you'd start to try to act. And Chad would just come up and be like, stop trying to act. You're not an actor. And it actually had a, it, that's what carried us through the show as far as I'm concerned, this idea that we shouldn't act. We should just, you know, know generally what we're going to say or what we're supposed to say or where the scene's going, but not try to like act, you know? And I kept doing that and Chad would just <laughs> put my hand down and be like, don't act. But yeah, uh, it was very challenging yeah, to, I... to, to go into scripted. 
seems it seems very difficult to to leap mediums like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I just before I ask the last question, um, I just want to let you guys know that we'll be doing Q and A. And if you do have a, a question that you want to ask, if you could go to one of the microphones on either side of the room, um, just before we get started. Um, and before we do that, I would love for you guys to yeah, tell us are. about your book that you're planning. A book? Are we planning a book? Sure. Wait, this, didn't this you is a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, we've been talking about a book for years. Yeah. Um, what that's eventually going to be, who knows? Yeah. And that's not, I'm not being coy. Um, that's kind and here of I thought you guys had a draft. No, no, no draft of a book. We've just been batting around ideas yeah. for five years. Oh, yeah. well, well, I look forward to the day when it eventually comes. <laughs> so, um, so I think I need to. No, we're good. Okay. Um, so, we, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to get up too early. Oh no, no, <laughs> I, I wanted everyone to get up All in right, advance. Cool. Hey, thanks for coming here. It's great. Thank to you have for you coming. Here. Um, I think, like you guys had touched on before, podcasting has changed quite significantly from 2008 when you started to now. Um, but discoverability of podcasts is notoriously quite bad if you compare it to like video platforms like YouTube or Facebook video and that sort of stuff. So um, if you were starting again from scratch today and you didn't know what you know right now or have the connections you now have and you, you were like nobodies, um, are there two or three things you'd be focusing on outside of obviously making great content, which we could probably talk about for two hours. Mm. Um, but outside of the content itself, in terms of getting it out to the relevant people and growing an audience over time, are there a few things you'd recommend for someone who's trying to do that? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and we get it a lot from people who write in and say, uh, hey, this podcasting thing seems kind of cool. Like, how do I do what you guys do? That was Katie Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't. Uh, she didn't. Um, we all, well, first of all, I, f I do feel kind of bad for anyone who is just now kind of trying to crack in because it's just a tough time. Mm. There's a lot of market saturation and, um, it's probably pretty tough, um, to come out of nowhere and, and get an, an audience at this point. But the advice we always give people is, um, technically, um, it should sound really great from the very first episode because someone won't listen to 10 seconds of a podcast if it sounds crappy. I think you had a chance before, but now it's just advanced so much that, yeah, that, yeah you really do. Yeah, because our early ones sound. didn't sound super great yeah, either. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, now it should sound really, really good. And um, we always tell people as well to stick to, a, decide your schedule and stick yeah. to it. Um, if you put out an episode one week and then you take a few weeks off and then uh, you put out another one, it's <laughs> going to be hard. You know, it's like any TV show. Um, people count on that release, and we've hit every Tuesday, Thursday for eight years. Um, one week, I think, by the skin of our teeth. It was like 11-something p.m. Yeah, but we generally release in the morning hours every Tuesday and Thursday, and um, if, you're, if you sound good and if you're super consistent and if you're talking about something that you feel passionate about, I think that's a great first steps. Yeah. Right. Something I would personally do differently, too, would be to do more live stuff. I used to have like this crushing uh, stage fright. I mean, just like Chuck almost had to push me out on stage. And it kept me from doing a lot of stuff and it kept us from doing a lot of stuff just because, you know, now that's okay. Um, so if, if I could go back and do it again, that would definitely be one thing that I would do more is like get us out there more. Because I think it's helped us tremendously. Yeah. All right, great, thank you. Thanks thank for you. your question. I would actually, I meant to ask you guys this before, but what podcast do you listen to? Well, uh, I listen to um, Judge John Hodgman. Um, listen to mainly comedy shows. I like Mark Maron's show a lot. Um, I listen. I think we both listen to Ninety Nine Percent Invisible. Mm -hmm. It's really good. And um, the a lot of these people are kind of colleagues and pals now, which is kind of a cool thing about the podcasting community. Is you meet each other at different events and things and. And you become buddies. So we know we know Mr. Hodgman. We know Mr. Hodgman. We know. <laughs> <laughs> it just gave him way too much like yeah. reverence. I just imagined him in a cardigan with like leather <laughs> patches on the elbow. Uh, yeah, so we've gotten to know some of these folks, and it's always fun to support their shows, and they support us, and it's kind of neat. The one that I'm a, like a just junkie for is um, Fresh Air, which I know is not even technically a podcast, um, but like that's the one where I get when people write in and say, like, I can't get enough of stuff you should know. Like, I just love it. 
Um, I get what they're saying based on my how I feel about fresh air. Like, I can just sit there and listen to fresh air for, for days and weeks. You know, Terry Gross is just awesome. I, I agree with that one. Um, go ahead. Um, hi, guys. Uh, Hello. Big, big fan of your show. Uh, I listen Thanks. to a lot of podcasts, and I think the one thing that you guys have is, like, you guys have a lot of great chemistry in between you guys, and it's very mixed entertainment. Uh, what makes the content fun to listen to, I guess. A uh, question that I had was about the clips that you guys record for the ads that you guys make. Mm -hmm. um, do a lot of the advertisers just trust you guys to kind of go your own way there, or is that very regulated? I was just curious about that part of it. It depends um, on some, say, like a financial adver or advertiser in like the financial business. There's stuff like they're like, you can't say this um, legally. Don't you'll get us in trouble. So you know, some of them come with this these caveats that we have to watch. Um, and Jerry's really good about saying like, no, you can't say that. Um, but for the most part, we'll get copy, and it's just you know, here are the points we want you guys to get across. Just do it how how you think is best, and and we do. Like I've I've taken to going Squarespace. <laughs> that was not a thing that Squarespace asked us to do. They um they just it just kind of came out of nowhere. Squarespace. Yeah, and they, they do usually um, encourage us to be users of the product so we can really talk about it with some enthusiasm. So, yeah. you know, we, we, we get, you know, underwear in the mail and, and snacks <laughs> in the mail and mattresses in the mail That's and true. stuff like that, and we use them, and then we're a little more informed. Our, our live uh, tour site is a Squarespace site. So, Squarespace. Uh, <laughs> so we... Uh, yeah, that that definitely helps. Is when you really like know the product and you oh, think, oh for sure, like this is cool. I've used uh, Blue Apron in my home, and it is a nice way to cook. Right. You know. Have you guys had advertisers from the beginning, or did it? Did it? No, no. no. Um, for a long time, it was uh, the podcast was, I don't, know, I guess maybe under threat from time to time because it was totally free. It was company supported, um, and. Whenever somebody wrote in and was really complaining, we'd be like, well, we'll give you your money back. <laughs> Just give us your address, right? We'll send some guys to bring you that refund. Um, no, but the, just it was completely, totally free. Ad-free, totally free. Um, and then as we were able to start selling ads, the podcast became self-sufficient and started making money. And um, it, it was a big change. You know, we were used to doing this without ads. It was just free content. Um, and it was a bit of a transition for us. And then, you know, we kind of came to understand it. Like, yeah, this is this is how you keep things going indefinitely. And there was a little bit of pushback at first from people who were listening, some people. Uh, but for the most part, I think everybody uh, gets that, like, that's just how you get free stuff. Like, there's ads. It's, a, it's an exchange. It's a trade-off. So knowing that, um, we try to make the ads entertaining. Um, and distinct from the actual podcast. We don't like them to bleed together, which is why um, we have jingles. There, we have commercial jingle into and out of ad breaks. And that's actually taken on a life of its own, too. This guy from uh, the Sheepdogs, right? Yeah, I think so. His name is Rusty. He just made up a jingle once, and we started using it for ad breaks. And then other people started sending us their interpretation of it. So we've got like an opera version, a banjo version, like like a DJ version. We have an ELO version. An ELO. We have a Peter Frampton yeah. version. Um, <laughs> all these amazing versions of the jingle. So it's this thing that was kind of controversial at first now is kind of given birth to some other form of creativity. You know, and that's been that's been pretty great about it. And I don't, I don't find them onerous or or annoying at all. I mean, uh, podcasting, podcast listening is great because you can just scrub, you can just <laughs> skip through the ads if you want to. It's not hard. What? Uh, I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> Would not recommend that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't condone that. Okay, um, I believe you're next. Uh, yeah. So uh, you guys have been doing this for uh, eight years now, give or take. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like at the beginning it just sort of started as like this idea. Let's give it a try and see what happens. And now you've got like world tours and this big following. Um, so I'm wondering if there was any like particular moment or something that happened where you sort of realized like, oh, wow, we're going to be doing this for a long time. Yeah. You know, I think probably for both of us, the very first big event we did was in New York here in Brooklyn, probably like six years ago. Maybe it? even longer. Maybe. Yeah. 
And uh, we did an event at uh, the Knitting, Factory. Knitting Factory in Brooklyn. I don't know if it's still there. Um, is it? Yeah. yeah. And the, um, the fire department came because there were too many people there. And Josh and I kind of looked at each other and we we're like, holy crap. Yeah. What's, what has happened in our lives? This weird thing that we sort of accidentally fell into. Yeah, that was cool. Um, and from that moment on, I think we, because, you know, we record in a little room with uh, just the three of us. And it's easy to send something out there and not, and you know, we always got emails of support, but that was kind of the only contact we had with the outside world. Right. Um, I make it sound like we were, <laughs> <laughs> we're not allowed to leave. <laughs> yeah, we were in the basement chained to the wall. Um, but when we really got out there and started doing events and people really enthusiastic, cool, curious, awesome people showed up, um, bringing gifts and, and tokens of appreciation and, <laughs> It really became like a thing that we understood was a little more than what we thought it was. Yeah. Cool. Does that make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming here. And also, thank you for Talks at Google for hosting these people. Um, so one of the things I realized during your session um, is that when you have a podcast, you have to kind of create a story from it. And I'm noticing that through your research, you have to kind of disseminate all this information and, and tell it in a um, kind of a compelling way to capture the audience. So was there ever a time in your podcasting creating where you felt so tongue-tied and you tried to find a way to tell the story? And then the other question related to is, is how are you able to tell the story so uh, where you're not pausing a lot or you're using very few fillers. That's what I find really fascinating, how you're able to tell the story very quickly. And even in this um, conversation, um, it's a very free-flowing conversation that's easy to, for me at least, to understand. So. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I feel like we stumble around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Blindly? Yeah, I mean, editing helps for sure, but um, I think that part of the charm of the show has been the, the real quality of it. Um, we, we fumble words around and say uh and um a little too much for professional broadcasters. Mm -hmm. But um, we just left that in from the beginning, and it just feels more like a conversation. And that's the feedback that we got from people, was it just seems like what it is, which is just two dudes sitting around talking about something that's, that we both know a little bit about of that's pretty interesting. And, yeah, uh, it has all the natural yeah. conversational indicators that you'd be used to listening to, which I imagine makes it easier to, to hear as well. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, as far as, like, storytelling, I don't think either one of us agrees or believes that we're storytellers necessarily. I think for the most part, like, I do believe that there are there's a story in every episode that, that we, we do but it's more like our role is get this. We found this really cool thing about the sun, you know, and how long it takes a photon. And all that together combines to make this, this story that each episode has. But um, I, I don't know if I consider myself a storyteller. Do you? No. <laughs> but we, we do. Like, by default, we are. You know, we, we have to be. But um, it's not, it, I think... If we were trying to, if we started fixating on trying to tell the story, we would get tripped up by that very quickly. Um, instead, we're just, you know, conversing about some stuff that we know, and then the story naturally emerges. That's good a good question. question. Wow, see that? Jinx. <laughs> you guys don't have any media training or anything like that? They've tried, and yeah. it, it always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, come on. Hi. There's a lot of parallels you can draw between blogging and podcasting. They both make it very easy for someone to sit in their garage and start disseminating publishing content. Mm -hmm. When you guys first started, did you consider doing a blog? And ultimately, what made you think that podcasting is a better fit? Well, we had a blog that we have done kind of on and off over the years, but it was never, sort of never the focus. It was always kind of um, just extra stuff. Is that the best way to say it? Yeah, like fun stuff. Like yeah. slideshows of creepy Santa Clauses and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> Not like pouring our heart out stuff. Yeah, uh, but that, you know, that was kind of when blogs were a little more, um, I don't want to say relevant. Do I want to say relevant? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have an army of bloggers descending I know. on you. <laughs> that was when blogging was just a little more of the focus. I think 
for us, podcasting was um, always in our, our comfort zone. Yeah, it, it it is something we are we both naturally feel comfortable with for sure. Yeah. We did both start out as writers for how stuff works, so that that is our background is in writing. But um, it was definitely not blogging. It was you know nonfiction writing, um, you know just writing articles on things like how black holes work and stuff like that. Yeah, blogging always seems, and of course they're non opinionated ones, but it always seems to lend itself more to an op-ed mm -hmm. than uh, other mediums, and that's just kind of never been our bag. Yeah, that's that's a good point. We've had to kind of shy away from that. So yeah. so going the other direction, I think, would have bled into the podcast, and it would have confused things. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. OK, is, are there any more questions from the audience? Last call. <laughs> Okay, well then I would like to give a very big thank you to Chuck and Josh thank for, you. for joining us today. And thanks appreciate everyone for it. coming. Thank you guys too. We appreciate you coming. Yeah. And of course, I'm sure you, you, you all know where to find Stuff You Should Know, which is on Google Play Music. All right. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank thanks you. Thanks for coming, you guys. Back to work. <laughs>